Alright guys, this is day one of 7th grade math assessment review. Take out your pencils, paper, and calculators. You'll have approximately 60 seconds to work on each question, followed by the how to do the question. Get ready. Your first question starts now. Alright, here we have measure the length of the bar. Where's my pen? There we go. Um, in inches, and here's the trick to this question. Sure, it ends on, let's see, the end of the bar is here, and that is at 12 and 1 quarter inch. Here's the problem. It doesn't start at zero, it starts at eight inches. So really, if you just count, here's one inch, two inches, three, four, and one quarter. This would be your half mark, three quarters, and all the way to 13. So four and a quarter inches is our choice, choice B. Question two, measure the length of the bar again. You have 60 seconds starting now. Regardless of where the bar starts, we have to measure it and how many inches is this thing. Um, we can do that addition, so there's one inch, two inches, and I just wanted to focus on this little bit here that's a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. So we're at two and one quarter inches, or choice D. Next question, 60 seconds, ready, go.
what is the value of the expression so we just need to solve this if you weren't aware these bars that they put on the outside are called absolute value so what we have to do is solve what's on the inside then I'll show you what to do so you take negative 3 plus a negative 9 which gives you negative 12 absolute value means whatever you have at the end it has to be positive so you flip the sign to positive 12 choice D next question 60 seconds ready go Okay, what's the solution to the equation? This is order of operations. Um, we have to complete the entire top part before we divide by the bottom number. Um, the 12 parentheses minus 3 or negative 3 is an assumed multiply here, and that is the first thing we do. We multiply before we add, so 12 times negative 3 gives me negative 36. If I add 4 to that, I get positive 32 so it's kind of like subtracting but you get or sorry negative 32 here I messed up there um, we're at negative 32 divide that by 4 and we're at negative 8 because when I divide a negative number by a positive it stays negative choice B next question 60 seconds you're on the clock table shows the relationship between X and Y which equation is true for each of the ordered pairs in the table so we've got four equations here one of these is going to work for every set of digits you see here so how do I approach the problem if I start with this 0 2 this 0 for X 2 for Y and I plug that 0 in here and solve so when I take 3 times 0 and add 2 I'm gonna get that equals 2 which actually is true problem is when I plug this 2 in here I get 6 plus 2 equaling y which would be 8 and that is not true here so we know that a does not work for at least that one so we already throw that out so we move on to B I'll go the same exact routine plug in 0 here 0 plus 6 is 6. It fails on the first try, so that does not work. So I just skip right ahead to C, and I start with 0. This is the easiest one to do. 0, 2 seems to work. If I plug in 0 here, I get 0 plus 2 is 2, so that works, so that's okay. Plug in the 2. 
I get 7 plus 2 is 9, so that's okay. Plug in the 4. I get, this is going to be a little bit tougher. We'll put in the 4 here. We get 14 plus 2 is 16, so it's worked for the first three. I believe we've got it. We're going to we're gonna kind of mark C, possibly. We're just going to double check um, the other two here. Plug in the 6. I'm going to get 21 plus 2, and it's, it's working. So we found um, our answer is letter C in this case. Next question. Ready, go. Find the missing number. Solve the left side. 3 times 5 is 15. Order of operations. 3 times 1 is 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. We need whatever on the this side. 3 times some unknown number has to equal 18. Well, 3 times 6 is 18. My choice is D. Next question, give it a shot. 60 seconds. Go. cube with sides numbered 1 through 6 is rolled one time, what is the probability of rolling a 4 or greater? I love probability. So I'm thinking of this cube. Think of a dice, think of a cube, whatever you want. But it's got six sides and each numbered 1 through 6. So we've got, when I roll this dice, it has to land face up. It's going to land on one of those numbers. The probability of rolling any one of them, say a 1 in this case, is 1 out of six possibilities. And that's how you write a probability. So each number, so if I rolled a 1, is a 1 in 6 chance I'm going to get it. 2, 1 in 6 chance I'm going to get it. So four or greater. What are those choices? That's a four, a five, or a six, each with a one in six chance of getting that. So I've got a pretty good chance of rolling one of those three numbers. So I add these three together and I get three out of six of those choices and reducing that down I get one half. So I've got a 50 percent or one half probability I'll roll one of those three numbers. My choice is D.